man discovered at an early age that just the ability to measure was not enough. If measurements were to mean anything, they had to agree with the measurements of other men. Since the earliest times, people have measured length with the hand, foot, arm, and finger. They measured time by observing the patterns of the sun and moon. People built standards of weight by filling a container with stones or seeds and then counting them. The English developed their own loose system of measurement based on common items and tradition. An inch was the width of a thumb. A foot was the length of a foot. And a yard was either the distance between the tip of one's nose to the end of the middle finger or the length of the sash around a person's waist. Over time, different societies invented their own numbering and measuring systems for trade, taxation, and land measurement. As the world became smaller and international trade increased, the need for a standard worldwide system of measurement became obvious. A measurement standard is a physical model of a unit that has been established as the basis for measuring. Primary standards for all units are defined by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in France. One example is the primary standard for kilogram, a platinum cylinder kept under a glass dome by the Bureau. Weights and measures are regulated in the United States by the National Institute for Standards and Technology, or NIST, which is located outside Washington, D.C. NIST is responsible for establishing U.S. measurement standards, which agree with the international standards in France. Periodically, U.S. standards are flown from Washington, D.C. to France, to ensure our national standards match the international standards. In addition, almost all states establish their own weights and measures standards, which must agree with the national standards. The Texas Weights and Measures Program operates labs in Giddings and Lubbock. These laboratories calibrate all types of weights and instruments to meet NIST guidelines. Periodically, other states ship their standards to NIST in Washington, D.C. to ensure that state standards match the national standards. These strict standards are the basis for the measuring system known as SI, or the International System of Units, which is the system of measurement used by scientists. Système international d'unité is French for International System of Units. It is where we get the term SI for our scientific system of measurement. SI is a network that links all systems of weights and measures, metric and non-metric. You are probably aware of the most common kinds of measurements that are used in SI. Length, mass, volume, temperature, and time. Except for time, all these measurements use the metric system. Data refers to any information you observe and record in science. You can observe and record information from an investigation, experiment, or field trip. There are two kinds of data. The first is quantitative data, which are numerical data or observations that relate to quantity or amount. Instruments that collect quantitative data have graduations, which are small lines or divisions that represent units. For example, the graduations on this ruler represent millimeters and centimeters, and the graduations on this graduated cylinder represent milliliters. It is very important to remember that a quantitative measurement must have two parts, a number and a unit. The unit is the defined amount used for a measurement quantity. For example, a unit of currency is the dollar. Some examples in science are the basic unit of length, the meter, and the basic unit of time, the second. Units can be represented by either words or symbols. 
Symbols are not abbreviations and are not followed by periods. The symbol for meter is a lowercase m. Kilogram is represented by a lowercase kg. Second is shown as a lowercase s. Liter is a lowercase l and degree Celsius is represented by a degree symbol followed by a capital C. The second kind of data are qualitative data, which are non-numeric descriptive observations or data that relate to quality, labels, or categories. In other words, any observations you record that are not related to numbers can be qualitative data. For instance, if you are on a nature hike, you may write down that the flowers are blue. That information is qualitative data. You might also use photographs, notes, and surveys to collect or measure qualitative data.